We praise the Lord. Truly, above all things, we must guard our hearts. Amen. Proverbs 4.23, above all things, it's very, very, very important. Our heart, as we've been seeing, is the altar. So it means every day we must guard our, the altar, which is our heart. And what we're teaching is actually how to do that. How to do that. The temple, as we saw last time, gives us a picture of how to do that. And we're going to look today, really, we're focusing on the first three, which is using the Word of God, worship, and washing through repentance, consecration. And that really is the heart of our personal prayer altar. If we learn to do this on a daily basis, then we will start to move on into deeper things God will transform our lives and transform our families and those around us and eventually the society. So this is a very powerful thing that we're looking at. So firstly, his word transforms us. Pastor Timothy has been looking at the importance of daily soaking in God's word. Why do we do that? Because it all starts with God's word. Amen? John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So everything actually starts. All of creation started with the word of God. So our day must start with the word of God. The first thing when you wake up, what are the words you're hearing? <laughs> Should be the word of God. Amen? So the Word of God is very, very important. We start our day with the Word. And we know that the Word is actually Jesus himself, who is the eternal Word of God. So as we bathe and soak in God's Word, we're actually soaking in the presence of Jesus. It's very powerful. You know, in Singapore, we spend more time reading about Scripture than actually reading Scripture. We know more about God than we actually know him as a person in relationship to him. So these prayer altar activities that we're bringing to you are actually basic Christian living that brings us into a living relationship with God. Amen. We need to soak daily in the word of God. How can you soak in a puddle? If you've got a little bit of water on the floor, you try and soak in that. It's very difficult, but you can soak in a swimming pool in a bath that's full of water. And so we need to soak in God's word. You know, one chapter, two chapters, just a puddle. Not enough to soak in. We need to read at least, that's why we're encouraging, 10 chapters a day. If, it's, if that's difficult, start. I first started on five, and then I realized, well, it's not enough. It went up to six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm reading regularly 10 chapters and more sometimes because it's not finishing the story. I want to finish the story. Okay, reading his word brings us to the altar. Let's read Psalm 43, 3 to 4 together. Send out your light and your truth and let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you. Amen. So God sends out his light and his truth. What's that? Your word is a... Lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. His word is light. His word is truth. So as he sends forth his word, he sent his word to us in the Bible. So we have to open it up and read on a daily basis. And as we do that, his light, his truth is leading us to the holy hill, to his dwelling place, to the altar. That's how we get altar consciousness every day, by starting with the word of God. The Word of God in Scripture, there's many pictures of transformation about the Word of God itself. That We're going to look at at least 10 of them in Scripture. And each picture gives us an understanding of what the Word God, of God does in our life. That's why it's important for us to read it daily. We read it, meditate on it, study it regularly. Daily we read it, daily we meditate on the Word of God. It will transform us. And these are pictures of what that, that transformation is. 
I'm just going to relate it to something personally. God has used the verse 2 Timothy 1, 7 in my life. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When I was in my early days, in my early 20s, going through mission training, this verse was highlighted to me. And I've been living in this. And even today, it's something that is transforming my life. So this is just an example of how that verse has transformed using the different symbols or pictures. So here's the 10 pictures, a fire to refine, a hammer to convict, a mirror to reflect, seed to multiply, rain and snow to grow, sword to cut, gold to enrich, food to nourish, lamp to guide, water to cleanse. Let's have a look at each one individually. First one, the fire, Jeremiah 23, verse 29, is not my word like a fire. What does that mean? The word of God comes to burn off things which are hindering us from growing in the Lord. Like for me, it was fear, fear of man, particularly intimidation. So the fire of, of God's word will come and burn fear off. And I've seen that as I daily stay and remain and soak in God's word, I'm having boldness of the Lord. Days where I miss that time with God's word, the intimidation comes back. So this is the power of God's word to burn off and then to burn in and through with passion. Fire is a burning passion. It's like Moses saw the the bush that was burning, but it was not being consumed. And there's a point in our life where the Lord is going to burn off all that should be burnt, but the rest, which is his very image in us, should be shining through. The fire of God burning in us. The hammer is the next one. It's like a hammer that shatters a rock. The word of God is a hammer that breaks strongholds. So in my life, fear was a big stronghold. The fear of man particularly. And it came from roots in my past. And so as I daily have been reading the word of God and confessing the word of God, meditating, living in the word of God, the word of God has been like a hammer to break down, tear down strongholds of fear that have held me back. The Word of God is also as a mirror. Mirror reflects here. This is a picture of us. We may feel like little kittens, no good, no use, but so small, so insignificant. And yet God's Word reflects to us that we are of the same line as the tribe of Judah, Jesus himself, that we have to reflect. We have an image an identity in Christ. So the Bible is like a mirror that reflects who we are in our sin. It starts to show us our sinfulness that needs to be dealt with, but it also shows us our identity in Christ that by faith we can walk in and we can claim as we daily confess those sins and are cleansed and consecrate our life. Okay, so fourthly, The word of God is a seed. You've been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through living and abiding word of God. Do you know a seed can remain many, many, many years? Even there are some prehistoric seeds that have been found that have been kept in the ground. And when they dig them up, they plant it, water it, and it grows. (laughs) And God's word is a seed. It can endure through a lot of tribulations and trials and eventually bring forth much fruit. So the word of God brings forth growth in our life. It helps us endure. When you first start with reading 10 chapters, it's very difficult. It's like a seed that is just there waiting. It's falling to the ground and dying. And you feel, oh no, what? there's no growth. There's nothing happening. What was? And you must endure. You must persevere. You must persevere. When you first start to learn an instrument, when I first started learning guitar, for the first years, few years, it was not sounding that good. <laughs> So I had to endure the horrible sounds at first and the difficult and my fingers were bleeding. But after that, the beautiful melodies, the beautiful sounds come. It's the same with reading the word of God. You have to endure and then there will become a growth and multiplication just like a seed. The next one, it's like rain and snow, Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. For as the rain and the snow come from heaven, does not return before the watering of the earth and makes it bring forth 
and bird, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which it pleases. Amen. So like rain comes, it comes to soften the ground so that then the seed can start to come forth and grow. So the rain talks about the softening work of the Holy Spirit through the word of God in our lives and again causing growth. So that's what happened when I started to meditate, to claim, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, the fire of God, the power of love, the fire of his love and the sound mind. There's growth that has come into my life because I've been claiming that word. And a sword, the word of God is like a sword. In scripture, there's two aspects of the sword. There's the Hebrews 4, but then there's also Ephesians 6. Hebrews 4 talks about the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to divide the soul and the spirit. This is actually a surgeon's sword that cuts into our life, that brings healing. You know, surgeons will need to cut before the healing comes. The word of God cuts into us. When I first started hearing that I had fear in my life, the word of God cut me deep and start to show me areas in my life that I, roots of fear and things which are causing fear in my life. And so I had to allow it to have its work in my life to bring deliverance. It goes right into thoughts and intentions, even deep down into our thoughts and intentions. Every day now, as I spend time repenting and consecrating my life, I'm asking the Lord to reveal even deep thoughts and intentions that are not biblical, that are not pleasing to him that I can be transformed. That's why the prayer altar will transform you, give you peace, let you be a better person that has more love for others. A lot of the things which are hindering us in our life cause us to have wrong attitudes towards other people. But the word of God sets us free. So it delivers us. In Ephesians 6, it talks about the word of God being a sword against the enemy. We have enemies of our soul and the word of God enables us to be victorious in our Christian living. And then also the word of God will enrich us like gold. The word of God will nourish us like food. It's our daily bread as we come to read the word of God. Then the word of God guides us and directs us. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the word of God cleanses and purifies us like water. So the word of God is all of these things. And I'd like to encourage you as you go back home, meditate on each one of these passages about the effects of God's word. God's word works in us and it's to work in us daily. Amen. So how are we to let God's word work in us? Read it daily. The Bible is is meant to be bread for daily use, not cake for special occasions. Many of us, we like to use the Bible as cake for special occasion. Just when we feel like it or there's a special event happening, then we read the word of God. It's daily bread. Amen. 1 Timothy 4, 6, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. So the work of God actually has three stages. There are things which reveal, such as the mirror and the lamp. It reveals our identity. It reveals even our sinfulness. And it reveals God's way forward for us. So when you come daily, God's word will start to reveal things to lead you. Then it refines your life, like burns off things in your life. A hammer to break strongholds. A sword to cut deep to bring surgery into your life. And then water to wash you clean and to present you as a qualified priest to do priestly duties and to pray, intercede for others. And it restores your life, restores you so that like seed you will grow and daily you will have food to make you grow stronger, to be a son and a daughter of the living God in his kingdom. Water to break your hard heart and to soften you. So there's a revealing work, the refining work, and the restoring work of God's word. So would you agree? You need to read 10 chapters a day. Can I hear amen? (laughs) Amen. The power of God's word. 
The Word of God is profitable in the four main areas. What are the four main areas? Doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. So imagine you've got a guy here with a signpost. He's on the road of life. This is you. You need the Word of God. Why? Because you need to... The Word of God to show you the right way, that's doctrine. Doctrine is important. As you learn the basic theology and as you read the Word of God, you have a basic philosophy of life that is biblical. So you have the right thinking. Then it reproves you, which means when you sin, when you do something against God's law, the Word of God reveals that to you so that you can turn around 180 degrees. You can repent and go in the right direction. The Word of God also corrects you from going in the wrong direction direction, which is wrong doctrine, wrong thinking, wrong ways of believing. It brings correction of error in your life. And then lastly, the Word of God trains you in righteousness. That's why daily we are to live in the Word of God. Let the Word of God train us, trains us on the job. That's why we need to meditate on the Word. Okay, so soaking in God's words. How do you soak in God's word? On a daily basis, we need to come, read 10 chapters. This is a suggestion. It's not a legalistic practice. We found that 10 chapters is a good amount. If you find it difficult, you can start on less chapters. But I will tell you, as you do it every day, you'll want to read more. So 10, read 10 chapters a day. The first thing you do, don't leave it to after times of prayer. Do it the very first thing because it all begins with God's word. Read 10 chapters. You can do five in the morning at five at night, but preferably do it all together. Don't read headings and extras. Just read through. And if you can, read it aloud. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Don't stop to dwell on verses. If you have one verse which hits you, just write it on a piece of paper. And then later in the day, you can start to meditate on that. Read it aloud and engage. Be dramatic as you're reading. So enter into the narrative. Imagine that you're there. If it's a story, imagine you're right there in the midst of the story. If it's a letter, imagine that you are the recipient. You are who the letter is being written to. And ask these three questions. What do I learn about God so I can praise him more? What do I learn about myself so I can consecrate more to him? What rhema word do I receive that I can meditate on it? And daily, I believe the Lord will give you words that you meditate on. So daily, you take one verse the Lord has highlighted in your reading. Sometimes for myself, it's not something I read. The Lord just highlights maybe from somewhere else in Scripture. That's okay. But as long as you're thinking about God's Word, or you can just think generally about what you've read in the 10 chapters. You're just thinking about the message that you've you've been learning from that person's life or that person's teaching or whatever, and start to meditate Meditation is you take one verse the Lord has highlighted in your reading, write it down where it can easily be accessed, take the first part of the day to memorize it, then the next part of the day to dwell on it as you walk, sit, work, rest. What did Joshua 1.8 say? Let this book of the law not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may be able to observe to do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. If you want good success, there's a bad success, but there's also good success. Good success is from the word of God. Amen. Go through the word, word by word. So as you meditate on the, on the word of God, you can just take it word by word and say, Lord, speak to me. You can take time as you go through every day. You're just, as, even as you're working, as you're walking, as you're going about your everyday activity, you're thinking upon the word of God. Write down and live out your revelation. Amen.